Shalom, shalom, Israel. Shalom, shalom, family. Okay, now we on the second episode, which is the uh, Ten Commandments. We got my brother, Monty. All right, shalom. Shalom, shalom, shalom. It's a beautiful day that most, most high has made. I mean, it's glad to be uh, rejoiced in it, you know what I mean? So um, just another day the most high allows to be able to bring out the second commandment in this Ten Commandments series. So I pray that you guys were edified on the first one. So now we about to go on the second one. Uh, so right now what we are gonna do is start with the scripture, uh, Exodus 20 and four. Uh -huh. The book of Exodus chapter 20 verse four. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Verse five, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the, upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Hallelujah. So basically, the Most High is saying, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. That's a command. That's a command, basically. So, um, um, so what we want to do is look at what graven image is. You know, when you look at the Strong's, um, and of course, you know, anything that we say, you can go ahead and uh, check it out. Uh, we want to, the scripture talks about study to show thyself approved. Right. So graven images usually from the Hebraic standpoint is something you carve either out of stone, wood, or anything you made out of molten liquid such as molten gold and melted gold and melted silver, things of that nature. Um, and that would be considered something of a graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven, or the Shemaim, we're talking about the stars, the sun, the moon, and all of that, uh, even like the angels, you know what I mean? Birds, because yeah. the heaven is basically yeah. on this level also. Yeah, the sky, yeah. Uh, or that is in the earth beneath, you know what I mean? Creepy things, uh, that is in the water, which is like the, the sea, uh, the, the fish, shrimp, uh, shrimp anything, <laughs> anything, in the waters, you don't want to make anything of that sort, right. graven image of that sort. And it says, um, you can say with well, this commandment is a twofold, it's like part A and part B. Yeah. Where it says, you shouldn't bow down to these things that you create. You shouldn't have bow down to these things that you carve on wood and stone. Um, and because you cannot, it's, it's, it's saying that don't serve them. Right. It's because most I say he's a jealous. God, he's a jealous Elohim, or Elohim, uh, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the third and fourth generation of them that hate him. So you see, this goes from generation to generation. So this instruction was for our forefathers, and it's for us, right? And it's for our generation too that comes after us, or the exactly. siege that comes after us. And one thing to note, it says that the generation of them that hate me, you know, and then the next verse it talks about. You loving him and keeping his commandments. Yeah. Like displaying hate is to bow down to these graven images. Absolutely. Wow. The image. Okay. The graven image, which is the Hebrew Strong's H6459. Mm -hmm. It says H6459 um, is an idol or carved graven image. There you go. There you go. An image that you carve. Exactly. Or grave. You see what I'm saying? Right. So it's something that you mold, like exactly. carving with a chisel or exactly. whatever it is, you know. Exactly, as well as it's uh, an, an idol, the word idol. That's correct. And then uh, we want to get what? Bow down or no, well, I mean. You, I, can, you can go that one if you want. Uh, yeah. So the word bow down is uh, Hebrew 7, 8, 12, and it is to prostrate oneself. It is to bow self down, fall down, beseech, reverence, make to stoop, and worship. So he's saying don't worship none of these graven images or idols. Uh, the serve the serve them, because he says nor serve them, is Hebrew 5, 6, 4, 7. It is to work in any sense by implication to serve. Also it has the word enslave. So don't make yourself enslaved to a graven image or an idol. Hallelujah. So if you want to enslave yourself to be a servant yeah. to somebody, you want it to be what? The most high. The most high. He say, don't bow down to any of these graven images that you yourself, what? Carved right. or molded together out of either wood, stone, and things of that nature. Yeah. 
All right, well, let's go to Leviticus 26, 21, because we kind of want to see an example of that, you know, because one thing is to have the laws, like we say in the commandment, but let's see what are the commandments, what are the, the um, what do you call it, be an example of, of what it's talking about. Yeah. So Leviticus chapter 26, verse 1. Ye shall make you no idols, nor graven image, neither rear you up a standing image, Neither shall, you, neither shall you set up an image of stone in your land to bow down onto it, for I am the Lord your God. So right there is telling you also, don't even raise up, like you said, the graven images could be made of many things. In this case, he talks about an image of stone. stone. So using stone to rear up an image. Thou shalt not do so. Right, so he's re-emphasizing it. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, he's telling you don't make it. And what comes with that is the... Part B of that commandment is he said, "Don't bow down Don't unto bow it." Bow down unto it. Well, he said, "He's what your Elohim. He's your master, exactly. and he's a jealous what Elohim." It goes right back to that commandment. So now we see an example of way of saying that it's a stone. Yeah. So you see right here, we're not just talking. All right. So right now, let's go to uh, Deuteronomy four, verse sixteen and nine. All right. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter four, starting at verse sixteen. Mm -hmm. Least ye corrupt yourselves. So you shouldn't do it because least ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image. The similitude of any figure, the likeness of a male or female, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flies in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. Verse 19. And least thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun, and the moon, and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them, and serve them, which the Lord thy God has divided unto all nations, but un under, I'm sorry, un unto all nations, under the whole heaven. So we see right now, you know, we read the, 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 the commandment, yeah. And it's kind of vague. It's kind of I vague. mean, it's 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 direct, exactly. but it's kind of vague. Correct. So now we go to 16. It says, how, "This how you gonna corrupt yourself, yep. making you a graven image." We've already said what a graven image is. Right. Okay. We've already described that. Mm -hmm. And now it's saying the similitude of any figure, something right. similar, something, something similar, that yeah. resemblance, right? Exactly. The likeness of a male or female. So now here it's talking about a male or a female. We know what a male is. Exactly. That's a man or a female, a woman or a girl or, you know, male being a boy. Yeah. Um, so he's saying don't carve any images similar to a man, uh -huh. but then don't do what? Bow down to it. Don't, bow don't down worship down. it because the most High, we are his creation. We don't worship the creation. We worship, worship the, the creator, creator of the creation. All right. Uh, go ahead and explain 17 for that. 17. All right. So you got the likeness of any beast that is on the earth. So rather there be a lion, a tiger, a bear, any type of beast, a dog, a cat. Mm -hmm. My aunt told me he knows some people <laughs> that worship their dog and cat. All right. So that's a beast on the earth. You got winged fowls that fly in the air. So remember the heavens above? Here it is, the flight in the air. So that's birds, eagles. Some people have, you know, they'll bow down to an actual eagle or the image of an eagle, right? Um, you also have the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, rather that be a snake or that be a rat or that be anything that creep on the ground. Don't make the image and then worship it or enslave yourself to it. Uh, it also says the likeness of any fish. So again, that would be anything, rather be a whale or an octopus or anything in the waters. Don't make an image and don't worship, enslave, or bow down yourself onto it. Or give it reverence as if it's your power right. or your God, you know? Uh, same thing goes, we kind of talked about in the first. Uh, the first commandment, right? Yeah. I put it before him. Exactly. Like, mm -hmm. let's say you got a lucky charm bracelet and it happens to be a fish on it. Or let's say zodiac signs. Zodiac sign. You'll worship the image of your zodiac sign saying that it gives you power and, you know, it controls your life and so and so. Don't worship the crab or whatever your zodiac sign is. Any of these images that just happen to be falling into this specific scenario. Same thing even with the sports teams. 
people will worship the sports team, but guess what? There's a graven image that the Most High has forbidden. Right. And you know, in, in this world, we all there's always an image huh. to give it power. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? And exactly. so when, just like he was saying, the zodiac signs, mm -hmm. that falls into Deuteronomy 4.19. Yeah. He said, unless you lift up thine eyes unto heaven, unto, exactly. and when thou seest the sun, how? the moon, yeah. and the stars, even the hosts of heaven, even should it be driven to worship them and serve them. Exactly. Which you who had given, divided unto all nations, unto the whole heaven. He gave the nation that stuff. Exactly. They're the ones that falls and dismayed by these things. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Like exactly. worshiping stars and moons. And then we as Israelites do the same thing. We end up falling into idolatry yeah. with these zodiac signs and the sun god, the moon gods, the sea gods, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, you see a lot of that in the Greek mythology, yeah. in the Greek culture. Yeah. And they're the ones that worship these creations, these celestial bodies and things like that. So yeah. the most I say, he don't want us doing that. Don, so see, like, here's an example. Don, that's like, like the mermaid. Right. Right. The little mermaid or you got like, a, you said Greek gods. Greek so God. what comes to my mind is uh, what's the one? He's the similitude of a man, mm -hmm. but he controls the water, but they call him something else this day. Um, I don't know which guy. I know like Hercules, Hercules Zeus, um, Odin, and Thor, and all these. Yeah, the one that, that, Yeah, the one where, yeah, it's right on the tip of my tongue. He just was in the movie, man. He's the one that got the little, the spear thing, but he lives in the water. Oh, Aquaman? Aquaman! <laughs> there is the fish jumping out the water. Aquaman, you know what I mean? Right. They have you, and then what? You you start worshiping these images. You bring the posters into your house. Yep. You start enslaving yourself to these images. Oh, yeah. Yep, go ahead. Let's go to Isaiah 40, 19. Let's get an example of something maybe he's talking about wood. Yeah. Uh -huh. So yeah. you see what we're doing? We're going into the commandment. But then we're showing you what it would look like. Yeah. So that there's no confusion because the exactly. scripture, the scripture defines itself. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? That's why I said precept upon precept, yeah. line upon line, here a little and there a little. So Isaiah chapter 40, verse 19. The workman melted a graven image. What did he do? He melted a graven image. And the goldsmith spread it over with gold and cast its silver chain. Read number 20. Verse 20. He that is so impoverished that he has no oblation chooses a tree that will not rot. He seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. So here we go. You know, Isaiah is showing you something where the, uh, like they, this, this person is looking for a workman yeah. that would melt a graven image. Yeah. What's a graven image again? Something that's carved out of stone. stone. Wood. wood now here we have what the melted the, melted. the molten part of it exactly. so they taking these stones they taking these wood and they put gold on it like yeah. melted gold and silver and things they of that decorate. nature right and he said he that is in poverty that he had no oblation choosing a tree yeah that will not rot so right after that we know a tree is made out of what wood wood so now here we have the example of the wood that it will not rot. So, you know, a lot of times they put these things, these precious metal on these trees so it won't rot. Exactly. And he's seeking unto him a cunning workman to prepare a given image that shall not be moved. Wow. And hence, here we, it goes back to where in Jeremiah 10, 10 where yeah. we was talking about in the first commandment that a tree don't move. Yeah. It can't speak and do nothing. nothing. And so this is what these workmen were doing, taking these graven image, uh, making molten whatever, and then they're garnishing these wood or tree that can't move exactly. uh, into making them into images. Right. Um, yeah. Graven image. Giving power onto the image. Giving wow. power onto the image. A little yeah. disoriented, but really Okay, exciting. so what we're going to do now is read Deuteronomy 24, 23. And that's through 25. Take heed unto yourself, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God. That's very key. It says, take heed. Be very careful. Go ahead which he made with you and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which Yahuwah thy Elohim or thy God hath forbidden thee. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. When thou shalt beget children and children's children and ye shall have remained long in the land and shall corrupt yourselves and make a graven image or the likeness of anything 
that and likeness of anything, anything. and shall do evil in the sight of Yahuwah thy Elohim to provoke him to what? Anger. To anger. To so provoke him to anger. Yep, so we got the commandments. We got the examples of what the commandment looks like. And now we have the consequence. So when you do these things, you can provoke the most high to anger. And I don't know anybody that wants to make the consuming fire angry. So it says take heed. That's another commandment in itself. Be very careful, be aware, be conscious of what you're doing to make sure you do not bow down, worship, or even make a graven image onto thee, onto yourself. Hallelujah. So therefore, that basically telling you that, that scripture is telling you that if you do these things, you provoke the most side to anger. Exactly. So immediately that means he becomes angry at you. Exactly. And it goes back to uh, the, the commandment itself in Exodus 20, where he says, unto them that hate me. Hate me. Yep. Exactly. He's going to hate you back. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So Deuteronomy 27, 15. Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 15. Cursed be the man that maketh any graven image or molten image, an abomination unto the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsman, and put it in a secret place. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Hallelujah. So basically, you can tell this is one of those read and response type things. Exactly. He's telling you don't do these things. Yep. Cursed be the man that maketh a graven image. Curse. He's going to curse, curse you. you. He hates you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just a, that simple. Right. You're doing an act of abomination. And abomination is something that's hated and disgusted and detested. Yes. So you're doing, you, you know what I mean? You're putting yourself in a character of doing a disgusting, hateful thing in the sight of the Moha. So therefore, thou shalt be cursed. And he's telling you and describing it again. Another, You know the Moha, when he repeats something, is re-emphasizing is that is that important that means he's not playing with you all right he says in making any graven or molten image we've already looked at all of that yep. an abomination unto Yahuwah the work of the hands of the craftsman so you know go speak so basically he's letting you know that's what it is and even if you put him in the secret place yeah he knows everything he exactly. knows what you're doing so meaning you do it you hiding the sin from men, but the most high know. Right, because you know, you see it, he can see everything. Can't do it in secrecy. And all the people say amen, that means they agree to it. So be it. So, and that's something that's generation to generation to generation. Exactly. So we have, have we have to make a conscious effort to say that we are not gonna do these things. Exactly. Come. Just like our forefathers agreed. Come. All right, let's go to uh Psalm 97, 6 and 7. Psalm 97, 6 and 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 97, verse 6. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. Confounded be all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves of idols, Worship him, all ye God. Hallelujah. So yeah, he's telling you that if you do these things, he's what gonna confound you. Now the idea is you have to figure out what confound means. Because a lot of times we read these things and we don't realize what these words are saying. You should have said confounded. So when we look at confounded, let me see if I can find that for you. That's Hebrew word 954. H954. It's basically to put to shame. To uh to be ashamed, be disconcerted, be disappointed. To be disappointed. Feel shame. There is date. It says so in verse 7 it says, Confounded be all they that serve graven images. So ashamed be all they that serve graven images. All right, so to be ashamed, when it says that you're going to be ashamed or uh, uh, confounded, all they that serve graven images, right? The book of 1 John chapter 2, verse 28. And now, little children, abide in him, speaking of the Messiah, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence 
and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Because remember, it says that when you serve graven images, you become the most high hate you. You become an abomination. So if his son comes and you are serving graven images, you will be ashamed at his coming. What, it, what the judgment is going to be and what he's going to do to you. Imagine thinking that you're okay with God and God is okay with you and he comes and it'll be the total opposite. Hallelujah. Yeah. So what we're also going to look at is 1 Peter 2 and 6. So 1 Peter 2 and 6, he says, Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief on a stone. We know that's the Mashiach. Yep. Elect precious. And he that believe it on him shall not be confounded. So it's basically telling you that, you know, the, the Yahusha is the cornerstone. He's the example. And he that believe it shall not be confounded. And we know it says believe it. Yahusha said in John 14, 15, if you believe me, if you love me, keep my commandment. If you love me, keep my commandment. You know, that comes with an action. That means we know the second commandment says to not do graven image. Do not bow down and worship these things. Carve. So if you love Yahusha, all right, and when at, at his coming, and being that he's the cornerstone, you do not want to be found ashamed. You do not want to be found that he's going to be ashamed of you. So if you believe in him, you will not be confounded. If you don't believe, or in other words, if you make these graven images and you worship them, then you will be confounded. And then believe it in the Greek. When you look at it, it, it says to put trust in, also to commit, to entrust. So if you entrust or commit onto the Messiah, of course you're not going to make graven images. You're not going to put that in the steed of your power. Hallelujah. All right, so let's go ahead and look at Revelation 22, 14, and 15. Book of Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Remember, curse was him that what? Served or made graven images. Now, blessed, the opposite, are they that yeah. do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gate into the city. Verse 15, for without or outside are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolatry and whosoever loveth and maketh the law. Yeah, so here we go. The main verse, of course, is 15, just uh, prefacing it with uh, 14. So it says, you cannot make it to the kingdom if you are an idolater. Right. See, that's the key word we're looking for. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Because in the second commandment, someone who worships other idols and makes graven images, they're called idolaters because you you are worshiping other gods. So we know an idolater will not make it into the kingdom. So that's why he said you'll be cursed if you do these things. Now, like he said, Monty said, you are considered blessed if you don't make graven images or bow down and worship to these, then you, your chances of making it to the kingdom is much higher. Exactly. <laughs> you're, you're, off, you're off the character or that checklist off that idolatry part right there. Let's keep going with the consequences because, you know, Revelation 21 and 8 is what we want to read. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So as you can see, yeah. More consequences. So now, if you make graven images, molten, stone, wood, whatever have you, worshiping people, a likeness of the heavens, uh, beneath, on the earth, beneath the earth, and in the seas, he's telling you, your chances are in the lake, you, you're gonna make it into the lake of fire. 
And you know, in, in today's terms, they call that hell, right? <laughs> that that type of hell. We know they never part in hell, but the lake of fire, which means you're gonna burn in that for eternity. I mean, we don't want to take that chance because most I say he's a jealous Elohim. He do not want you worshiping other gods. He do not want you carving uh, molten uh, wood and stones and using molten and molten images. Uh, and serving them above him. He don't want you putting these things uh, above him. And so therefore you want to abstain or stay away from graven images so you won't make it to the lake of fire. Yeah. And, uh, and what, what's key here, or what's, what's something to notice, is if you make graven images and worship them, you make about three, three of the listed here. You got abominable because it's hated. You got idolaters because you, you're worshiping idols. And you got whoremongers, technically, because we know the Most High uses the language that we're, you know, the husband and the bride, and that Israel has committed spiritual fornication. So you you commit forn spiritual fornication when you worship graven images as well as idols. Hallelujah. And this thing can be very, very, uh, it's a serious matter. Yeah. Let's go to Revelation 9, verse 20 and 21. Uh, setting the scene, we know this is after the sixth trumpet. And where the army coming from the east. And this, you know, where it's talking about the sixth angel, where it sounded. Um, go ahead and read that. Revelation chapter 9, verse 20. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their theft. As you can see, I mean, you're talking about a third of men. A third of men killed. Even in that time, mm. won't repent. You know what I'm saying? And it talks about the idols of gold and silver because they're so convincing their mind. Yeah. You know, a lot of times when you operate in that mind and when the Most High confounds you yeah. and turn his back on you yeah. and he leave you with a reprobate mind, even back then, <laughs> even, even later on in the future, yeah. he's telling you, People are gonna still see these things, all this stuff happening, men being killed, right. and still won't repent. Still won't repent. So right now, that's what we need to do. Mm. A lot of times, what we need to do is repent. Look at yourself, examine yourself, to see if you are doing these things. Exactly. To see if there's something that you're hold on, holding on to, something tangible that you are putting what before the most high. Exactly. All he's asking you to do is repent from that. Put me first, the Most High is saying, right. so that he don't confound you, so that he doesn't um, abhor you or detest you because of these abominations, so that he doesn't hate you or be ashamed of you. You see what I'm saying? So that you don't provoke him um, to anger. You become an enemy of God. You become an enemy of God. Hallelujah. What kind of fight is that? <laughs> A losing battle. All right, let's go look at another example of this. Uh, 1 Samuel 15, verse 23. 1 uh, Samuel, what chapter was it? Uh, 15, verse 23. 1 Samuel chapter... Okay. Yeah, setting the scene, this is what, when Saul's disobedience. Okay. When uh, Saul, you know, the Most High gave Saul a commandment, and he basically disobe disobeyed the Most High. Exactly. You know, we're not going to go into all of that, but make sure you read the first, the entire chapter of 1 Samuel chapter 15 to see what, how the story lands up so that way you can see the context. But right now, well, we're going to go into the example of what happened. All right. All right. Verse 23 and 24. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. What? Stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, 
Why? Because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Wow. Right. So, you know, this is something that, you know, we may go through in life where you are stuck at a crossroad and you have to make a decision. Are you going to choose tradition? Right. Or are you going to choose the word of the most high? Right. And when we say choose tradition, we're talking about maintaining Christmas. Yeah. It's the Christmas tree, maintaining yeah. Easter, yeah. the Easter egg after Ishtar. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Maintaining all these different customs in Christianity or whatever other religion yeah. that keeps us away from the most high. Separate. And all of this is that even though you've not specifically or personally crafted these graven images, but the images have been set before you throughout history and turned into customs and traditions. And now we're holding on to these things. So we see where in his stubbornness, we call that idolatry. So that puts you right back on the list on the path to hell. Exactly. Idolatry. Absolutely. Stubbornness. And also, you take a look at this. He said he feared the people is why he rejected or disobeyed God. Okay, so if you fear the people or you fear how your image looks to other people, then you can be caught right in the same idolatry. Like he's saying, if, if, you're, if you're so used to being in this custom or tradition with your family, and now you hear the word of God and you know what's right according to the word of God, will you fear the people and be and, and, and do and disrespect the word of God because of the people or because of how your image is? What about if you've been changed to a lower state because of the image you used to have? Will you disrespect the word of God because of you fear how the people will perceive your image now? All that is idolatry. Right. The scripture talks about the most high hating pride, God. hating a prideful person. God. So when you are, every one of us has been at least in a situation where you have to make a decision. You see what I'm saying? Where you know you you don't you have to worry about your self image and and yeah. whether you're going to be prideful and yeah. because uh, you want to go with the majority. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Because he said, be in the world, but not out of the world. Be the, the majority of the world, they like wickedness. Yeah, exactly. You see what I'm saying? So if you find yourself being the only person in a group of 20 people, and 20 people are going the wrong way, the wrong path, or doing these customs and tradition, which way are you going to do? So we don't want to be like Saul. Right. We don't want to be like Saul just because he feared the people. He ended up disobeying the word of the Most High. Let's not do that. That's a perfect example. Perfect example of not falling into idolatry. You see what I'm saying? So this is what we want to do. So like he said about following the people, you find yourself going to, the only one going one way. Exodus 23 and 2. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. <laughs> That's a commandment. You feel me? <laughs> Thou shalt not yeah. follow the multitude to do evil. And you know, it's always, the most high always deals with what? A remnant. Exactly. Chances <laughs> are, if it's the majority, something might be wrong. With exactly. it, you know what I'm saying? And exactly. I'm not saying it's always the case. Yeah. But you just have to use wisdom and be a little more aware. You know, we have to be watchmen. You always have to be watchful. Watch your eyes and your ears and what you see. Because I'm telling you, evil is abound in this world. And there's, this, there's a plethora of it. You know, the, our enemy is going around searching who he can what? Destroy, devour. He's looking to steal. Um, Hasatan is looking to kill you, basically. You know what I'm saying? That's all he wants. And he's going to use you until he can't use you no more. And then once he destroys your flesh, that whatever demonic forces in that, uh, you know, look for another one. Exactly. They constantly going up and down. Okay. What do you say? Yeah. What did Yahuwah say? Where have you been? Where have you been? He say he's been up and down, through and fro. Yeah. You know what he's doing, causing yeah. mayhem. Yeah. yeah. And to touch on something else you said, um, with the multitude, even in Daniel 3, with the image, Nebuchadnezzar made the image, right? All the people bow down and worship. You think that. Meshach, Abednego, and Shadrach didn't stand out like a sword throw. They're the only ones standing up. Everybody else worship. Perfect example, man. Yep. So you know the most high. So read Daniel 3 to read that story yeah. where Nebuchadnezzar even made what? A statue. Of a similitude of, of himself. Of himself. <laughs> so 
scripture talks about that. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? We read that already. Yep. Where someone made a statue of it. And not only that, he wanted people to bow down to him. Oh. But Daniel, the three Hebrew boys, they say, nah, we ain't going to do that. Why? Because they understood the ramification yeah. of bowing down to a what? To a graven image. image. Exactly. And uh, the ramification of that of what? You're going to provoke the most out of anger. He's going to be ashamed of you. He's going to hate you. And you're going to end up what? And the lake of fire outside of what? The kingdom. That's outside the kingdom. Man. The worst place to be. All right. The last thing we're going to touch on is the bell and the dragon. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's a good example. You know, I think we can use um, outside of the, the canon, the, the approved canon, I guess you could say. But to me, all of the most High's word is his word. Exactly. Um, and then if you look at bell and the dragon, there's only one chapter, I believe. You go to verse 27. Verse 27. Yeah. So this is the book of Bell and the Dragon and the Apocrypha, or the 1611. Uh, chapter 1, like he said, is only one. Verse 27. Then, <coughs> then Daniel took pitch and fat and hair and did see it them together, like boiled them or cooked them, and made lumps thereof. This he put in the dragon's mouth. And so the dragon burst in sunder. And Daniel said, Lo, these are the gods he worshiped. <laughs> a god that died <laughs> so basically daniel told the king look i'm gonna kill this dragon yeah you see yeah. what i'm saying so daniel like he said he made a pitch and he put in the dragon's mouth and the dragon blew up basically exactly. you know in our terms that we use he blew up <laughs> so a god that blew up exactly. and so i mean daniel you could say he rubbed it in the king's face yeah. he said look this is the what you was worshiping exactly Sure. Yeah. So, I, we say this to say this, and we'll leave you with this. The gods that are created with graven image, that are carved with wood, stone, molten, glass, or what have you, they cannot speak. They cannot move. Just like the scriptures say, they stand upright like a tree. You see what I'm saying? You need nails to fasten it and all these different things. But they have no power to do good or evil. Absolutely. And he said, do not worship anything in the Shamaim or the heavens. That's anything in the air. That's the birds. That's whatever that flies. Anything that represents something in the Shamaim, like angels or whatever. Or the Most High himself. Absolutely. He said, even beasts, like the, what, the dragon. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they was worshiping the dragon. But, you know, Daniel handled that. Yep. And so, and then you got the sea. You know what I'm saying? He handled that. And so, then you look at the sea, fish, all these zodiac signs, the moon, the sun. The Most High said, look, man, I'm a jealous Elohim. Do not make no image of these things. Not only that, do not bow down to them. Don't bow down and worship them. Don't yeah. enslave yourself to them. Hey, you know who, who you yield your members to is who whose servants you are. So don't enslave yourself to a graven image. And touching back on what Daniel was saying, um, he's showing you that these gods have no power to save you. They are not in the steed. They are no power. We only have one true power. Worship ye him. Right, Elohim. That's the, and if you don't agree with the name or at, at least the, the, the God who created everything, yep. the God of Abraham, uh -huh. Isaac, uh -huh. and Jacob, exactly. and the one that has chosen Israel, the people that are the apple of his eye. That's the one whom we serve. And that's the one we do not want to put, be ashamed of. You know what I'm saying? That one we don't want to be confounded. One we don't want to pro uh, provoke the anger. Because we're trying to make it in the kingdom. Because outside the gate is what? Idolaters. And those are people that worship brave and image. Yeah. No. Yeah. So don't choose a God that can blow up. <laughs> choose the God that is invincible. That's that that is it. Don't choose the losing side. Yeah. Choose the winning side. You're gonna choose a God that can blow up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, one thing he can blow up, but right. then he, he don't come back to life. Exactly. Once he blew up, that was it. That was it. You know, I find that to be funny. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I find, and I believe the most I probably laughed at it. You God, know what I'm saying? Right. Yes, right. What, what's his name? Uh, 
The one that was saying that if your God can deliver you, right. where he was telling oh, you. Oh, oh, Elijah. <laughs> Elijah, yeah. yeah. He's he calling your God, make yeah, me what busy, they, he on the trip. <laughs> what, what they doing, they sleeping? Where he sleeping? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like your God sleeping where they at? Yeah, exactly. I can imagine, but you know that's our people, man. Yeah, that's exactly. our people. You talking about like, where your God at? Right. Where he at? Right. I thought you was going to get your homeboy to, you know, handle business. Man. Yeah, but yeah, them, you know, it's our people, man. This book, it belongs to us. Yeah. You know, anyone can come in, but the most high, you know he in trade. That's why he said he shows his word unto what? Jacob. Jacob. Um, just like all the nations on earth, who did he choose? Israel. You see what I'm saying? All the flowers on the thing, he chose what? A lily. You see what I'm saying? All the rivers, all the body of water, he chose a river. All the birds, he chose a dove. So you see the most high man, if you are who you are and you know who you are, you know who I'm talking about, make sure y'all don't make no images, man, because that's what got us in trouble, idolatry. So, man, I pray that y'all was edified with this uh, particular lesson. You know, pray Yahuwah willing. You know, through the authority of Yahusha, man, you know, we'll come back with uh, uh, commandment number three. Number three. Um, we are looking to try to see about doing this every week. Yahuwah willing, you know, I'll be so busy, but uh, we'll get it done. So, Shalom, Israel. Shalom, Shalom. I pray that all of you are blessed. It's that we show self hate Cause it's what we have been taught We need to do something different